Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today I wanna to take a little bit of time to talk about the S&P 500. Now the S&P 500 is what I like to call a self-cleansing index fund. The S&P 500 only holds what are considered the top 500 companies within the US. And so this means that a company that is not growing with the economy will eventually drop out of the index just based on the fact that they're not growing as fast as other companies in the US. And so instead of going out and trying to pick the individual stock winners every year or that the gurus may be selecting or trying to be like Warren Buffett because there's only one Warren Buffett. And even Warren Buffett suggests that the average beginner investor or just the average retail investor if it's not your job to pick stocks and you don't know how to read a balance sheet, you should be focusing on just investing in the S&P 500 index fund or a total stock market index fund with your money. And so one of the benefits of the S&P 500 is that there are a group of people from Standard & Poor's who decides what companies go into the S&P 500. And they have some of their own criteria to decide which companies can go in. But one of the main things is that the company has to have at least $5.3 billion in market cap. And so that means that this only holds larger companies within the US. If you're a small company, if you're a small company, you you're automatically won't be included just because of the fact that your company isn't the right size. And there are some other criteria as well, but I won't go into all of those details, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can see what the additional criteria are. But the main thing I wanted to focus on is the fact that if there are companies that aren't doing so well, you don't really have to worry about it because they're gonna make the decision. And based on that company's performance, their company is gonna make the decision of whether they can be included within the S&P 500. So for example, in 2019, there were 20 companies that were moved in and out of the S&P 500. And so far in 2020, in the first quarter of 2020, there are only two companies that have been moved in and out of the S&P 500. So as an example, on January 28th, a company called Paycom was added to the index and a company called WellCare was removed from the index because they were acquired by Centene Corp. And then on March 3rd, another change was made because the company Gardner Denver acquired Ingersoll Rand, adding their combined company to the S&P 500 index, and then removing a company called Semerex Energy, which has actually lost about 75% of their value just in the year 2020. Now, some of that loss was due to the price war currently going on, but also probably due to the coronavirus as well. Now, I bet many of you watching this video probably have never heard of any of the four companies that I just mentioned. And part of the reason is that maybe you don't work in the industry that any of these four companies, and also because you probably don't have either the time or the knowledge to do the research to learn about these companies to tell whether or not they are growing or whether or not they are large enough to be included and being worth investing in. And so that's another great reason for you to allow Standard & Poor's to make the decision for you just by you investing in the S&P 500 index fund. Because anything involving an acquisition or maybe a company that's been losing money over time, you don't have to think about those 500 companies, you just invest in all of them by picking the one index fund with the S&P 500. Now, while the two that I just mentioned, those two changes that were made in 2020, they were both caused because one company decided to acquire another company. But sometimes the change may only be just because the company was losing value or the company was not growing fast enough. So using another company as an example, one that many of you probably have heard of is Foot Locker. On April 4th of 2016, Foot Locker was added to the S&P 500 index, but then on August 9th of 2019, they were removed from the index. So for a little over three years, Foot Locker was growing enough and they're market capitalization was large enough for them to qualify for the S&P 500. But in August, and over probably the past year or two, they have been losing value because people either aren't shopping at Foot Locker enough, or maybe the management at Foot Locker, maybe they're not doing enough to help the company grow or to gather new business. And so on August 9th of 2019, Foot Locker was moved from the S&P 500 down to the mid cap 400. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the S&P 500, it only includes large cap companies. And those are companies that have a market cap of at least 5.3 billion. So once Foot Locker 
lowered below that threshold. I don't know the time period that they were below that market cap, but after a while, the people at Standard & Poor's decided it was time to move them from the S&P 500 down to the mid cap 400. Now, as a follow-up to a previous video that I made where I talked about the differences between index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs, I did mention that Apple was removed from the S&P 500 when they were added to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And that was incorrect. It was true that they did move to Dow Jones, but they weren't removed from the S&P 500. In fact, Apple is one of the largest holdings within the S&P 500. And if you look at the top 10 stocks within the S&P 500, they account for about 25% of the value of the S&P 500. And those companies include Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, owned by Warren Buffett, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan & Chase, Visa and Procter & Gamble. Now that is actually the order from the largest holding in the S&P 500 because those are the top 10 companies within the US as far as their market cap. And this can fluctuate throughout the year. For example, Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble, prior to this huge drop in the market due to the coronavirus, they actually weren't in the top 10. But because Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble are one of those safe companies to invest in whenever there's a big drop in the market, because the products that you get from Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble, those are things that you're gonna buy no matter what is going on with the economy. You still need tissue, you still need medicine, you still need soap to wash your body, and you need things like disinfectant wipes and things of that nature. Those are things that you're gonna buy no matter what. So they didn't drop a lot in value during this time period. So when you're investing in the S&P 500, you're investing a big chunk of your money in these top 10 stocks because they make over a quarter of the value of the S&P 500. In fact, the top four companies in the top 10 make up 17% of that 25%. So nearly one fifth of the S&P 500's value is within the four companies that I mentioned. And that's Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google. So while picking individual stocks may be a sexy thing to do, it may make you feel good if you happen to pick one that's growing over a long-term period, that's great, but if you don't wanna take the time to learn what those companies are actually investing in for their futures so that they can continue to grow, or if you don't wanna learn what's going on with their each quarterly report that they put out, then the best thing for you to do is to invest in the S&P 500, especially if you're a new investor or if you're a person that just wants to set it and forget it and not think about or take the time that would be necessary to learn more about these individual companies. In fact, most professional investors can't actually beat the S&P 500 over a long-term period. As I mentioned in a previous video, if you've watched my videos in the past, Warren Buffett actually made a bet against hedge fund investors that over a 10-year period, they could not beat the S&P 500, and he didn't lose. So if you wanna beat 80 to 90% of the professional investors out there, all you need to do is find an S&P 500 index fund, invest in that consistently, and you will actually beat 80 to 90% of professional traders out there. And this is why they use the S&P 500 as their benchmark as far as what they strive to beat each and every year. All right, now that you know how the S&P 500 works and how the S&P 500 is actually gonna decide what investments your money is gonna go to when you buy that index fund, what do you think about investing in the S&P 500? Is this too simple for you and you'd still like to pick your own individual stocks? Or do you still think that maybe there's a catch and that you know, paying someone else to invest for you is gonna give you better results. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Let me know if you already invest in the S&P 500 or perhaps another index fund like the Dow Jones or the Total Stock Market Index Fund. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching, have a great day.